Hi, this is Andre. This is going to be a video showing how I modified Razor to work with reactor blocks. And you can also use some of the techniques I'm going to be showing to modify other instruments and effects to use in blocks also. If you follow my YouTube channel, you might have noticed there haven't been any new videos up in the last couple months, and that's because I haven't uploaded any. Uh, I threw out my back a couple months ago and wasn't working in the studio for about a month. And then when I got back in the studio, I just kind of focused on finishing up some of my own music from last year and doing some of my own production. So I didn't get around to making any new videos and haven't really made any new grid grid patches. But I figured I was overdue for a video, so I'd show this thing. Um, I did this modification to Razor a couple of weeks ago and then just kind of started using this thing last night and was having some fun with it. So I figured I'd share it. Um, so basically, as you can see, I added this patch bay onto the side of Razor. I also added an, an internal sampler. And um, so this is basically the samplers for the vocoder. And then the patch bay allows you to send modulation from blocks into Razor and override its internal modulation. Uh, here, I'll play notes so you can hear uh, you can hear it working. <laughs> And um, you might notice too, I have uh, I did a slight modification to the toy box modulation lane over here. Uh, I just stacked four of them into this thing. So, um, just uh, the main reason I did this was because uh, I wanted to make the best use of the space over here. And um, you can't stack two two modules next to next to one in rack. So just to get the best use of the interface, I decided to just put these four into one uh, using stacked macros so that I would have space to use to uh, just add other modules down here and not have this like empty space and, you know, four of these multi-stage envelope generators over here. And uh, this is the same multi-stage envelope generator that I showed in another tutorial on how to modulate um, things in the grid using using blocks. And uh, originally when I was setting up this whole thing, I wasn't even really planning on using Razor in blocks. I was actually just building an ensemble where I had these multi-stage envelope generators running into Razor. But then I kind of had the idea that it would be cooler to just um, put put this whole patch bay right on right inside of the, the Razor instrument so that I could load it up as an ensemble. I mean, load it up as an instrument in Rack. Because before... I had all this set up on separate instruments wired into Razor. And then, yeah, I just consolidated them all. Uh, so, yeah, let me... Um, like I said, the sampler is running into the vocoder, too. So, I think I had a preset over here. So, yeah, that's uh, showing that the vocoder works. And so... There's a sidechain input that that's if you're using this in in an ensemble, so you can just you know do the normal input. But then I also have this mod input over here, so you can send samplers from uh, from blocks into here. And then yeah, you can also override the pitch with modulator. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm, let's load this up in rack so that I can show you just from loading this thing up how all this stuff works, and then. After after that, we can load up Razor and start these modifications from scratch. So you can just hit enter because I saved it into my um, user ensembles. So it pops up just like any other block, uh, user block. So if I just drag that over here, put these down here. And then let me add that modified um, toy box modulation lane. So you can just wire this up now, just like any other block, and then I'll run these into the mod inputs. And one of the reasons I decided to do this was because Razor is like one of my favorite synths. Um, I think it's probably the best additive synth there is, in my opinion. 
And um, I'm not crazy about the internal modulation on it. And when you're automating it in a DAW, sometimes it's a bit weird because uh, a lot of the parameters aren't labeled, so they just show up as numbers. Uh, you can work around that by using the macros, but either way, I kind of thought it would be fun to just be able to load it into blocks and play around with all the cool blocks modulators to, you know, stumble on happy accidents. Uh, like um, like that stepper one I was showing earlier on the um, on the ensemble I had, which is, where was it? I'll show you this one. Let's just let that load for a second. I guess we have two of these now. So like this, this thing is pretty fun because this is like the, um, what do you call it? It's like the stepper in Massive or Inspire. So, you know. So you can just kind of hit random on this thing and get kind of interesting sound effects. That's all I did for that last thing. I just hit random. And so yeah, that's kind of fun. And then these are really nice working um, multi-stage envelope generators and you can set up like multiple patterns on them and they have all sorts of settings. So these are really, really well-made multi-stage envelope generators. So it's just nice having these inside of um, basically with Razor and being able to use Razor in this kind of modular way. So anyway, let's get back over here to Rack. So, um, so yeah, I just wired these in and basically what's going on in this um, matrix over here is that for I I basically um I'm overriding envelope two, envelope three, LFO one, LFO two, echo steps, and after touch. So the, those are these ones over here. And for each one of them, they have the option to override it, which modulation input it, it's going is going in, which I just have as default as one, two, three, four, five, six, so they're just in order. And then the direction. So unipolar, unipolar to bipolar or bipolar. And I know this is maybe a little bit of a funny way to do this. You know, if you were really doing this the right way, you would probably add more uh, modulation inputs instead of just overriding them. But um, that seemed like kind of complicated to do. It seemed like a bit of a hassle. And so I figured this was just a really quick way to do it and without, you know, getting in and, you know, I didn't want to have to change the look of Razor and I didn't want to like add a bunch of menus that looked weird. So this just seemed like an, an easy way to get what I wanted out of it. Um, yeah. And, you know, I'm not an, like an advanced reactor user. Uh, my, you know, understanding of it is pretty basic. Uh, years ago, I kind of delved into building of effects and samplers and synths and stuff in reactor, but I haven't done it in about five years. And, um, you know, I never really, I never really learned it too well. You know, if you do want to learn building in Reactor, uh, like going more deep with it, I would recommend um, checking out reactortutorials.com. The guy who teaches on there, Salamander Anagram, he really knows what he's doing with Reactor, and um, he's a very good teacher and he has a lot of really advanced stuff. But anyway, I kind of sidetracked. So let me just show you how this is working, and then we'll we'll set it up. So uh, if we go to so, so like, let's say we want to run mod, mod one to control this cutoff. So you can see mod one over here is wired into envelope two. So I can just go to envelope two. And that's working. And then if I switch this to unipolar, then I can change this over here to unipolar. And that works fine. And then, like I mentioned before, too, uh, you can convert unipolar to bipolar in here like this. And then, um, so like I was saying, too, you can just now load in any any modulator you want. So let's say I just want to get the basic uh, Native Instruments Bento LFO. Throw that into this free slot over here number five which is assigned echo steps so now if i want to let's say assign this to echo steps or to that you can just go over here and and yeah that works fine 
And again, you can make this unipolar. Like that. And then, um, yeah, like I was saying too, the sampler is hardwired, so if we just put this on vocoder. Yeah. And again, you can switch that to the mod input, and then you can just feed the vocoder input over here. And then lastly, before we build this, I'll just show you that the pitch is working. So um, if we load in a sequencer, let's just get the basic uh, bento box sequencer from Native Instruments over here. Run that into the pitch, and let's uh, control it from the clock, and just add a couple of random notes here just to hear that it's doing something. All right. So you just got to switch that to blocks. So yeah, that's the sequencer controlling the pitch instead of the MIDI. And um, yeah, that's basically it. So let's open up Razor and I'll show you how to do these modifications. Oh shit, what I just do? Whoops. Accidentally loaded up, loaded up that preset. Let me just load up default razor from over here. Okay. Uh, first thing, let me just put on a init preset. Open up edit. Okay, and the first thing, like I was mentioning before, if, if you want this to work in blocks, you need everything contained in one instrument. Remember I was saying before I had a bunch of instruments wiring up into each other because I was just doing, a, doing it in an ensemble and then ended up consolidating it all. So first thing, just to get it all consolidated for now, let's copy this because these are two separate instruments. So let's just uh, create a new macro over here. Okay. And now we can delete these and run. Oops. Run those into there and then run C into C. And then yeah, I accidentally deleted those term those inputs, so let's just create two new inputs. call this left and right and this is the setup for the vocoder so now we don't need this okay so now before we start actually running any cables or anything let's just create a space to work with over here because we don't want to uh, clutter up the actual interface on Razor. So the first thing, I'm just going to create a picture off on the side. So you need a picture ready. Uh, I just did a quick, um, where is it? Clouds in Photoshop just to get a basic thing over here. So I'm going to change the size to, I think I had it at 130. And the height, I'm guessing, was approximately 600. And then you got to unlock that to move it. And you got to be careful not to accidentally grab onto something else because um, you can um, mess stuff up on the interface of Razor. I'm going to turn off the uh, label. And that... That looks about right. Let's make this thing a little bit smaller. Like about there. Okay, cool. And then let's uh, select a razor and just get rid of these pixels on the right just to kind of have that snap in. There's still a little bit of space. I could move this over, but 
I don't want to spend too long trying to make this thing perfect. I'm trying to make this video, you know, not run on too long. So uh, the next thing, let's create a couple more pictures just to um, get the different sections. So let's add another one. And then go over to view. And I'm going to load in this... Oh shit, is that the same image? All right, I'm gonna load in this light colored one. And again, I know this isn't really setting any of this up, but it's just to create a space to work to work with so that it's not cluttered on the main interface. So we can tell what the hell's going on. So this one will be the main matrix. And then let's just copy that picture. And the one below it can be, um, let's let this one be like the the pitch selection and the uh, vocoder selection. And then let's copy it again. And then this one can be the um, actual patch bay. And then let's copy it again. And then this one over here can be the uh, the outputs. All right. Okay, now that all that's out of the way, we can actually start putting this thing together. Hopefully my mic is loud enough. Let me just, that's probably fine. All right, so to get the patch base started, you, um, I think the easiest way is just to kind of, for to get those little front front patching things is just to steal them from any other block. So let's just go into Bento Box, grab, I don't know, the LFO over here, and then just take one of those inputs from it. You know, you could set one of these up yourself, but I think this is kind of an easy, just an easy, quick, easy way to do this. Make sure that one actually has the image. Yeah, that's the image right there for, for these ports. So let's just copy this. Paste it over here. And then uh, one thing, these are not visible on A, so you have to turn it on. And then um, also you have to paste the front patching things on the top layer of the instrument. They can't be inside of the macros. And so let's just copy that over here and we can call this one mod one. Let's duplicate this, and call this one mod two. And then um, I'm not gonna create six of them like I did on mine because you can just scale this up as you want. Uh, I just wanna show you basically how to set how to set up all the individual parts and then you can just add more of them and you know copy and paste things to get it working how you want it. So now let's create a macro that's going to contain the uh the whole matrix. Let's put two terminals in here. Why are these in? This one let's call mod one, and this one will be mod two. Oops, can't even see that. Let's change this to M1 and M2. And then um, I'm going to set this up a little differently than how I had mine. I, mine was, um, like I said, I did a couple different versions of it, so... Uh, I was looking back on it and a couple things looked weird. So I'm just going to simplify this. So let's get a uh, selector. Let's give it two inputs. Let's run these into here and let's call this env2 uh, select. So like I was saying, the first modulation I had was overriding envelope two. You can do whatever you want um, in terms of how you set that up, but I'm just going to do it like this. So now let's create a list.
and let's make two entries and let's call this one mod one and mod two. And then yeah, for mine I had six entries because I had six modulation inputs, but for here we're just gonna do two. And then let's hit apply, so that'll convert these to zero and one. And now let's uh, go to auxiliary and get an A to E, so that converts the audio to an event. <coughs> Because um, like in the modular world, everything is audio. The um, modulation and audio was all audio. But when you go into primary, uh, the modulation is events. So this converts that. And so let's send this to an output. And let's just call this uh, E2M for envelope 2 modulation. And then let's... Uh, here, first, let's put this list over here. And we can call this list uh, env2in. And let's change the look of it to be a menu. Let's make it small. Let's bring the width down a little bit. And let's make sure we can read that. Okay, cool. We can read it. And now let's create a button and, and another list. So a button and a list. And let's call this button override. Let's, let's just call it over so we can see it. And the list we'll call dir for direction. And then these are just going to send to terminals. And you could, um, you could do this a different way. The first version I did of this, I wasn't running these all to terminals. I was sending them to IC sends and uh, I see receives inside of Razor. Um, but then th that was before I converted it to blocks. And then when I ended up converting to, converting it to blocks, I just ran it all this way. Um, I'm not sure if using sends and IC sends actually uh, uses more CPU or not, but that's why I'd, I decided not to use them was I was worried maybe they would use more CPU. So anyway, so I'm just going to do it like this. It's a little more tedious though because you have to create in in inputs and outputs all over the place, but it's not it's not too much, and you're only doing it once. So uh, let's call this one E two O for over, and then let's call this one E two D or E two D for envelope two direction. Okay. And now let's uh, organize the look of this so that we can see what's going on. First, I'm going to put this, let's make this small and put this over here. And then this one, let's make this be a menu, small, and uh, let's bring this in a little bit, put that over there. And then let's also add the entries on here. So there's going to be three of them. The first one will be uni for unipolar. The second one will be uni by. The third one will be by by. So that's basically saying this is unipolar modulation to unipolar modulation. This one's unipolar to bipolar, and this one's bipolar to bipolar. Okay? And so um, is that all set up right? Oh, one thing you got to convert... This needs to be zero, this one one, and this one two. Okay. And so now we can just duplicate these and let's just switch them to be for envelope three. All right. So, um, Let's change this, uh, where's that list? This list to say envelope three in. And now let's just grab these and bring them below. Okay, so uh, since we're only doing two of them, that's all we need to do inside of this macro. So now let's go over here and then let's go into the synth and let's create uh, shit. Let's create six inputs. All 
All right. Now let's um, bring this over here and wire these in. Oh wait, let's uh, let's label those so we can see what they are. So this one is E2M. So I'm just going to label them the exact same as they are on those outputs. All right, so now that that's done, let's copy these and paste them into modulators because that's where all this is going to be going on. And then wire them in. I know this part's a little bit tedious, and like I was saying, you can do sends and IC sends and all that, but, um, you know, it doesn't take too long. And then obviously once it's done, you just save it as an, as an instrument and you, you have this all wired up. So now let's first override envelope two. All right. So the first thing, let's uh, get a selector. Let's give it two inputs. And let's call this... Um, Uh, let's call this env2 over for env2 override. And now let's run the first one into zero and run that to out. And then the position will be selected by um, by the button. So E2O, that was the override. And now let's create another selector that's going to be for the for the different directions. And let's give this one three inputs. And then let's run um, envelope two modulation into zero. The position should come from E2D. And I'm going to move these out of the way. So envelope two direction. And then you have to do a little bit of math to convert them. Because remember, the first one was unipolar. And so the second one is going to be converting unipolar to bipolar. So to do that, let's get out of math a multiply and an add. And then let's run E2M into here. And then we're multiplying that by 2. And then that's going to add oops, to negative 1. It actually, I should have done a subtract by 1, but I, I did add by negative 1. Either way, that works fine. So then we're going to run that into the second one. And then for the um, bipolar one, we just have to get another multiply and then run this and we're going to multiply it by two and um if you're wondering how where these numbers came from it was just kind of trial and error me playing around with this until i figured it out okay so now that's all set up for envelope two so basically once now that this is done you can pretty much just copy this setup for everything else you want to modulate so like here's envelope three, all, all you have to really do is just copy and paste these and just rewire them in. So, you know, you just do the same thing and then you can do it for as many of these modulators as you want. So remember on mine, I had envelope two, envelope three, I had, here's LFO one, LFO two, and then I had echo steps. And then I also did after touch, which is over, over here. So I did that one on this, on this section. But anyway, um, I don't want this video to run on forever. So Rather than wiring up any more of these, let's just make sure that this one actually works. So uh, let's use this bento box to test it out. So let's run let's run it into modulation modulator one. Let's turn on override. Let's put the direction on bipolar bipolar, and now let's just test it out on this cutoff. <laughs> So that works fine for bipolar. Now let's try unipolar. That works fine. And now let's try unipolar to bipolar. 
So you see that's a unipolar signal, but it's coming in bipolar. And that works fine. So yeah, that's basically what you have to do to do the modulation. Like I was saying, you can just add that to as many parts as you want. And again, I know it's a little bit of a funny way doing this whole overriding instead of adding additional modulation sources. But as you can see, it's not too much work and, you know, it, it, it works. So, yeah, now let me show you the next step. Let's, uh, let's add another thing to override the pitch. So to do that, let's go back into here. And then where was those? Okay, so I'm gonna just copy this. So these, th this is uh, this over here. I just wanna copy that to get another one of these inputs. Now I'm gonna move it up here. I'm gonna call this one pitch. And then, let me bring this down down here so I can see what I'm doing. So uh, I think before I had a whole macro that was doing all this stuff, but I'm not even going to bother with that because there's not too many steps to this. It's pretty simple. So you just need to get an auxiliary and do an A to E and then just multiply it by 120. Okay. And then let's get uh, a list. And let's just call this one pitch in. Let's bring this list over here. And then let's um, add two entries. Now the first one's going to be MIDI, and the second one will be Blocks. And then let's um, let's go into here and create two more inputs. Let's bring them over here. And let's run these in. So uh, this one, let's call V oct for volt, volt per octave. And then this one, let's just call, uh, or, I don't know, pitch switch. So let's run um, this signal into volt per octave and the list into pitch switch. And then those are now over here. And then um, if I'm, I'm trying to remember exactly where the pitch was, so I think it's this case, I think it was this line right here is where we need to do the override. So let's get another select from here. Let's give it two inputs. So let's run this PGM into zero. Let's run this pitch into one. Oh, no, oh shit. Let's run the pitch, I mean, that thing into position, and then the volt per octave into one. So let me just move this over here so you can see what's going on. So hopefully that makes sense now. And then now this is going to run into P. Okay. So uh, now let's test that out and see if it works. So um, let's load in a C. Oh, yeah, I'm on rack. Let's load in from bento box, uh, the eight step sequencer. And then let's load in, um, actually let's just load in the, uh, what do you call it? The note in. That'll be the simplest way to tell that this is accurate. So let's run that into pitch. And then, so right now we're on MIDI. Let's turn this off so we just hear the straight sound. Now we're on blocks. So yeah, that works. And now, just out of curiosity, let's see if we run this LFO into the pitch. 
That works. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's all working. And then you can do the same for the gate. And then um, what else is there? So there's also the vocoder input. You know, this video is running kind of long, so I'm not even going to show you that part because I think you understand now how to do these things. You can just simply copy for the vocoder input. You just can co copy these um, patchable inputs again, and then the vocoder input goes over here. So you just got to replace these ones and do the same thing with the selector. And then um, the last thing will be adding the outputs. Here, I'll just show you how to do that really quickly. So here's an output. Let's copy that from uh, from the bento box output. And then let's um, paste that over here and call it uh, left. And let's make it visible. And that's over here. Hopefully you can see where my mouse is moving. Okay, so now here's left out. And then let's duplicate that, call that right. Move that over here. So uh, now we can, we can delete these and run left and right into these instead. And then um, if we're in this ensemble, all we have to do is then just run these to the same place as the, as the other ones were. But anyway, now let me just show you. So like I said, yeah, I'm going to skip over the whole vocoder thing because that's you, you, get, you get what to do. It's the same thing, basically. And now one thing that's an important step if you're going to save this uh, for use in racks is that you have to copy the view for, uh, for Razor. So if we just click on this, go to the view, and you see down here where it says copy A to B, do that. So we want to have the same view on A and B because in racks, things, um, everything that's front patchable shows up on the B view. So if you loaded this into racks and skipped that step, you'd have a bunch of um, things all over the place because the view, the view wouldn't look right. So anyway, now we can um, save this over here. Uh, And so now let's um, load up a rack and just see that this thing works. And uh, it's not going to show up right now over here because I haven't copied it into my user um, my user blocks folder. So I'm just going to simply drag it in from where I just saved it to. which is, uh, let me find it. I'm, I'm going through the folders on a separate screen. Instruments. Here it is. Okay. So here, let's put it above these. All right, so now let's just run the output to here. That works. And now let's um, just try out some modulation on here and just make sure that these work in here. Uh, where's Bento LFO? All right, so I'll just try Bento LFO again. So if I run it into mod one, oh, we can just test this out again. Uh, okay, that's set on Unibuy, so let's put it on Bye Bye. All right, let's put it on Unipolar, just double check. All right, that works fine. And then Unibuy. All right, so that all works. And now let's, uh, 
let's grab a sequencer and just make sure that the pitch works in here too. Let's create a couple of random notes. Let's turn this a little bit less. So yeah, all that works. So basically, you can just take this and scale it all up. And um, yeah, if you wanted to, too, you could add a sampler like I had done in mine. Um, but yeah, that's the general idea. And so you, I think you see now how you can just convert these things. And um, which I was... Um, kind of happy to realize that that works because I wasn't sure if you could load in instruments from primary into blocks at first uh, when blocks came out because uh, everything in blocks is made differently you know they have uh, they're made in core and they have this separate view for the panel and for everything else but yeah this works just actually copying things from primary into blocks no problem you just have to convert the signals so um yeah Hope you all found this useful and thanks for watching. Okay, bye.